Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day on this beautiful Wednesday morning. And uh, we're in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, uh, just with a, a few short verses right after the, the transfiguration event where, where Jesus had this mountaintop experience with Elijah and Moses and, and Peter, James, and John were there and they got to see it. And Jesus comes down from the mountain and uh, verse 11 says, And they ask him, why did the scribes say that first Elijah must come? And Jesus said to them, Elijah does come first to restore all things. And how is it written, the Son of Man, that he should suffer many things and be treated with contempt? But I tell you that Elijah has come, and they did to him whatever they pleased, as it is written of him. Now, this is a, a short conversation between Jesus and the disciples where they ask a prophetic question out of Malachi chapter 4 where they, it, Malachi says Elijah has to come before the Messiah. And, and so they're asking Jesus, can you explain this? Can you teach us this? We don't understand it. And Jesus answers and says, hey, look, Elijah has come. He's referencing John the Baptist who came, you know, preaching repentance for the kingdom of God is at hand, calling people to repent of their they're evil, uh, and he was baptizing people to, to illustrate a fresh start, a new commitment uh, to God. And in fact, John the Baptist baptized Jesus at the start of his ministry. He didn't want to because he wasn't worthy, but he was obedient, and when Jesus told him to, he did. And then John was uh, you know, recognized as a prophet by the people, and then he was arrested by Herod and executed by Herod. And Jesus said, hey, Elijah has come. John the Baptist was him. He prepared the way. He got people's attention. He focused on God doing a new thing. And then Jesus prophesies his own arrest and torture and death. He says, hey, how is it written that the Son of Man, that he should suffer many things and be treated with contempt? He wanted them to think about this. Hey, this is, this is what's ahead for me. Uh, so Jesus prophesied his own death. Now, can I just tell you that God knows what is ahead? God knows what is ahead for this world and all of its craziness. God knows what is ahead for your life and, and what's going to happen down the road. He knows how it's going to end. He's known how it's going to end from the beginning. Uh, he sees all of that, and he doesn't usually tell us what's going to come. Can, can I just be really blunt? He doesn't reveal that to, to most of us because we couldn't handle it. You know, sometimes I think if he had told me when I came to Calvary as pastor 28 years ago what it was going to look like, I would have been so impatient and so arrogant that I probably wouldn't have been able to be used by God. Uh, he doesn't tell us, but he knows and he plans to bless us, not to harm us. You know the promise in Jeremiah. And now Jesus knew what was to come and he could handle it because he's the son of God. Uh, we're not that equipped. But here's the thing that I want you to know. God knows what is ahead for you and for me. And God knows how he's going to redeem that. Jesus knew how the Father was gonna redeem his own death, and that was the resurrection, okay? That was the salvation of mankind. That, I mean, that, he knew that so he could walk that road. But you and I, we, just, we, we don't know, but we know that God will redeem, and we know that God wants us, his children, to trust him, to trust him, which is why he says, you know, through the Apostle Paul, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I'll say it, rejoice. It, and it's why he says through the Apostle Paul, rejoice always, pray continually, and in everything give thanks. This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Why? Because God knows what is to come. God knows how he's going to redeem, and he wants his children to trust him. And by the way, we can trust him because God has told us that he's already won. See, when Jesus died on the cross, he declared it is finished. The victory is complete. Sin and death and hell has been defeated because the sinless Son of God took your sins and my sins on himself and paid the price and offers us redemption through faith in Jesus Christ. We have already won. And if you've confessed Jesus as Lord, then understand nothing can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. The victory is ours. Not because we're good, but because Jesus is great. And he has paid the price. Now, he pretty much promises it's going to be difficult to get there. It's going to be painful to get there. But he also reminds us it's going to be worth it to endure whatever comes because God knows what is ahead. God is going to redeem it. And God invites you and me to trust him because we win. I hope that encourages you today 
And I hope that that helps you to live life a little bit more courageously and a lot more joyfully. Have a great day, Calvary.